Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. This is Nabil Bukhari, and I am glad to be talking to you again. Uh, this is the new normal channel that you're tuned into, and I hope you've been enjoying the session so far. Uh, but right now, right here, I have a treat for you. Uh, joining me right here is Ron Malaga, who most of you know, but I'll introduce him, um, though he doesn't require any introduction. He's the Senior Vice President and the General Manager of the switching and routing division for Broadcom reporting directly into the CEO. Um, and I am really happy to have him here because his thought process, his vantage point is something that you would be really interested in hearing. Ram, thank you so much for joining us here and welcome to Extreme Connect. Hey, good morning, Nabil. Thanks for the introduction. Hope you're doing well. Absolutely, you know, we're all rolling with the current situation as it is, right? Um, so Ram, you and I've talked quite a bit about, and we do so on a regular basis, uh, that look, networking is changing, especially the enterprise networking, and it is changing at a rapid pace. And now with COVID around this pandemic, it's really accelerating that change. So I wanted you to share with, with our viewers here on Extreme Connect, your general view from your vantage point and how the enterprise networking is really morphing at what speed and then interestingly, Broadcom is putting in a lot of different capabilities into their products that could really, really help our customers on that journey. So I just thought that we'll start from there and get your views on this broader topic. Hey, uh, thanks, Nabil. So, uh, just maybe a little bit of an introduction uh, for, uh, you know, for some of the audience here in terms of what Broadcom does. Um, we essentially are playing in the infrastructure space where 99 plus percent of all the traffic in the world goes over one of the Broadcom devices. Uh, Broadcom has devices all the way from being in the cell phone, for example, the Wi-Fi connectivity in most of your high-end cell phones is from Broadcom. And when you are at home, the CPE devices, the set-top boxes inside those are, you know, very likely Broadcom devices. And after that, you eventually connect into the service provider network, you eventually hitting the data centers, whether it is an enterprise data center or a large scale data center like the public you know, data centers. And eventually traffic coming back into the uh, enterprise through the campus into the wiring closet and even the Wi-Fi um, uh, devices that are in the enterprise. So. Um, when we uh, look at what we uh, have a vantage point from in the context of Broadcom, we have a very, you know, uh, broad view. And, you know, what we kind of see here is we're really living in this connected world. And uh, what I tell my team and the others that I talk to we, is that we are on the right side of the digital divide. You know, by that, what I mean is when you think about it, a year from now, two years from now, nobody can tell you for sure that they're going to be flying as much as they've flown in the past. But most people will likely tell you they're using you know, Zoom, WebEx, or some other application five or 10 times more than they've ever used before. Uh, and you know, our children and kids who never knew what Zoom is, suddenly that's half their day, uh, right? We meet doctors even on, on Zoom right now. So what's connecting all of this is the network. So when you think about it, when the country went into a shutdown, California went into a shutdown, um, your company, our company, we were all essentially considered an essential service, you know, because the world recognized that without the networks, you know, um, the economy probably would have been shut down even more so than ever. So when you think about all of this, what's going on is this demand for bandwidth is just kind of going through the roof, uh, right? Whether it is video or, you know, augmented reality or just even children at home you know, instead of being able to go out and play in the playground, you know, playgrounds they're out gaming and so on and so forth. And this is just a start with regards to what is expected in terms of 5G and so on and so forth. But at the same time, you know, the need for uh, being very power efficient is becoming increasingly um, uh, a mandate because you no longer can put so much bandwidth in the little space that you have and the power that's coming in, whether into your home or central office or into the enterprise without being super power, power efficient. And on top of that, security cannot be an afterthought. You know, previously you at least had uh, employees coming into an enterprise and then you had a secure perimeter from which they can operate. But now everybody is going to be working either from home or some other location or a Starbucks or wherever they can go and find some hotspot connectivity and still be social distancing. So 
you need to be able to let you know your partners and your employees connect in and you have to make sure it's all secure when you think about you know all of this then the amount of burden that comes on to it departments in terms of being able to manage the sudden shift from on premise to off premise and you know still keeping the data centers running the remote clients running and so on and so forth the same number of people have to handle a lot more so which means the whole notion of hey how much can i automate how little do i have to be involved in can i make more of this you know fully automated self driven so to say is what people start to think about and you know in that context you know we look at it and say hey look what does broadcom do well is which is every 18 to 24 months you know we want to double the bandwidth at least double the bandwidth of silicon that we produce and be able to keep up with this you know insert about the band for bandwidth that keeps growing right so hopefully that gives you some perspective of more broadly what broadcom does and you know specific to switching and routing how we're thinking about it and some of the changes that we're seeing happening in the market Absolutely Ram no that that's that's wonderful i think that was a very good summary of you know some of the things that are happening out there and how things are changing and i think what was really important was for our viewers that are sitting out there in who are responsible for designing new networks or running new networks or planning for the future as the workforce really changes and becomes hybrid on prem and off prem uh so hopefully these are some good ideas for you to think about Ram just to summarize what you said you you talked about bandwidth like with due to zoom and netflix and people actually you know even for our consumers like people actually kids getting education right. on their um you know on their TVs or on their monitors right here i mean like i know that in our company uh we have gone to gosh i don't like 30 million minutes of video conferencing <laughs> you know on on a, in a day which is just i mean it's an astounding number just imagine the amount of bandwidth that just us are using and you guys being so much bigger are probably you know 10 times more than that you also talked about top power which is a very interesting topic that more power more more um you know cooling consequently yep. is required for all of this bandwidth and then security security not just as an afterthought but security which is deep into the infrastructure itself um and you know that we are partnering with you um on this journey and bringing a lot of these things in together but i'm going to focus in on the last part that you just mentioned which is that everybody out there has to do more with less number of people because right. i know for our viewers that's something that hits really close to home because we're all feeling this this concept of automation um you know we've invested a lot in our cloud technologies to really bring that automation and be able to do a lot around the globe for a lot of our customers so let me ask you this so so as cloud becomes more important from this automation point of view and as you put a lot of these new technologies in your asics how do you see these two things kind of coming together to really help you know some of our viewers out there either run the networks or design the networks or business leaders really wrap their heads around it yeah yeah good a uh, good uh, a point nabil so uh, you know back in the 90s uh, if you were in the switching business the customers that you really focused on were the large financials and because they were the ones that were really exploiting you know the technology the networks and um that used to be your top 5 10 customers in with regards to where you would be selling networking whether it is switching routing wireless whatever you know uh, it was but if you look at the last 5 uh, five years maybe even in between 5 to 7 years the consumers of networking and bandwidth have really been the mega scale uh, you know data centers you know whether that is amazon google facebook uh, or alibaba baidu tencent um, right and, and they have been the ones who've been consuming it now when you think about uh, how they run their you know data centers you're talking about a data center that's probably the size of many football fields you're talking about a data center that probably holds between um uh, a couple of 100000 plus you know servers and might easily hold many tens of thousands of you know switches in there and even those data centers are run with this whole concept of a lights out data center so you know all you really see when you see a picture of this massive data center is a sea of lights and a few blue uh, blinking lights and there's very few personnel in that data center 
And when you are running a data center at that scale, and you only have what they call a site reliability engineer, a couple of them managing a data center the size of a few football fields, your entire paradigm on how you're managing that network changes. Yeah, okay, uh, you, you cannot throw many bodies that solving this problem. It is all about how do I automate this whole management of the network? Everything from when you bring your first switch in and it connects to the servers, the notion of a zero touch provisioning, that switch should be able to come out, download its profile, uh, get connected, right? Once it's up and running, you know, you cannot afford to draw packets through this very, very large, you know, uh, network. Because when you draw packets, I know obviously the TCP is being you know built to be able to retransmit, but when you're running a very distributed cloud, where when you drop a packet, the job completion time increases exponentially, right? So visibility and monitoring to seeing where congestion is happening, how do you avoid you know dropping the packets, and those become extremely important. Then you know last but definitely not the least is you know being able to make you know moves and changes, rapid moves and changes, um, right, yeah, is also extremely important. Which is, you know, previously things were in a different you know domains, and you want to be able to connect those domains. So, long story short, when we are forced to think about solving problems for you know data centers at this scale. It's all about visibility, monitoring, instrumentation, automation, and the holy grail being essentially heading towards this notion of self-driven networks. And the idea of a self-driven network is when it notices this congestion that is happening in certain ports, it wants to be able to automatically load balance the traffic onto other links which are underutilized, right? And so taking concepts like ECMP and then taking them to the next level. So all of this is being fundamentally built into our silicons that are focused for the very high end. And then we take that same technology and IP and roll it down into you know, silicon that goes into the enterprise, whether it's an enterprise data center or a campus aggregation and then you know, into a campus access, right? So just, come, uh, just a little bit of an example of why are absolutely needed and it's, uh, these trickle down technologies become very interesting in the enterprise market. Absolutely, Ram, and, and, and I was gonna make that point and, and you, know, you, you made it already that one of the things that I find really interesting um, and awesome, honestly, about Broadcom and its portfolio is that yes, you know, going from the biggest of the biggest data centers, multiple football fields, those are all run on Broadcom uh, Silicon, but then all the technologies that you actually have in there, you bundle it together so it can come down and scale. And even people who might think that, oh, I don't really have a data center that is two football feel long, but your data center might be modest, might be two servers or might be two server racks. But the beauty is that what Ram has put into these Broadcom ASICs, uh, we as a, you know one of the partners for Broadcom, we make it available for you as well. So the same way as these big cloud providers can run their data centers, large data centers, lights out with like probably a few SRE engineers, we together with Broadcom bring the same capabilities, the same technology for you, no matter what the scale of your network is, so you can do the same. Um, you can have that visibility, you can have that automation, you can have that onboarding experience, the zero touch as Ram talked about, um, for your environment as well. And that is something that Ram, you and I talked about quite a bit. Uh, and, and I know this is our favorite topic, democratization of technology. It shouldn't be only for the haves. It should be for everybody, whether you are running one office or you know half the world, which actually brings me to the next, next, next topic. Um, do you feel, or, or what is your opinion about as technology becomes more and more available and accessible to various different portions of the enterprise? You know, like, as you mentioned, there was a time like 10 years ago that some of these technologies, only the largest of the providers could think about it. Right. But now anybody can use that. How do you see that impacting, you know, business as a whole um, or, or said another way, uh, how can our users or our viewers here can really think about taking these technologies that you're putting in the silicon and building a business competitive advantage for their own businesses? Yeah. So, you know, um, another example, maybe um, uh, I'll bring to bear here and to answer your question. 
Um, not long ago, the way the networks used to be built is a classic layer two, layer three network, right? Layer two, you would run spanning tree, and then in some place in your aggregation, you do a layer two, layer three demarcation. And the challenge always used to be is, you know, business, you know, or, or an IT uh, person would come and say, hey, my network is down. And historically, when you said, why is your network down? More often than not, you find out it's because there's a problem with the spanning tree. The problem with the spanning tree was because somebody came and connected a switch or connected a device into the network that they should not have connected and created a spanning tree loop. And next thing you know, there's a complete meltdown of the network. And if you're in a hospital in the middle of a surgery, suddenly your network's not running, right? Or you're trying to close your books before and suddenly your network's not running and you cannot connect to your databases. So um, when you think about a problem like that, uh, and look at what the mega scale guys have done. Five years ago, they said, look, I cannot have any layer two in my network. I'm going to go layer three everywhere yeah, because that is very robust, proven IP, IPv4, IPv6. Then everybody said, well, then how do I connect layer two and get layer two adjacency over layer three? So then came the concept of VXLAN. We said, hey, take VXLAN and tunnel layer two over layer three, and that will give you the most robust network that you can ever expect. Everybody who sold into a traditional enterprise poo pooed the idea, said, no, 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 you shouldn't be doing this. And by the way, if you're trying to do wireless, you want to do cap fab and all of this you know, capabilities were thrown in to overcomplicate the network that only led to an unreliable network and eventually you know, not able to achieve your business goals. If you were able to take the technology with partners like yourself and bring it to the market and actually build much more scalable networks. But what it gives you as a business advantage is your ability to move very quickly. Right? For example, what does VXLAN give you? You suddenly decide you need to scale your call center, um, right? Or you decide you need to add a bunch of servers to be able to enable a, a new uh, e-commerce you know, uh, portfolio or a transaction, whatever. Now you can add a server anywhere in your data center and seamlessly connect it over this overlay technology with VXLAN and not worry about do you have space in a rack and do you have to rack and stack it? Is the power available there? Is it inside the same layer two domain? And do I get layer to adjacency connectivity? All of it is gone. So just the speed at which you can move to scale up and down, just like a cloud will scale up and down without being caught into all the traditional idiosyncrasies that held you back are gone. So business agility, right, is what you get because that's how the cloud guys think. They have to scale up and down in a dime's notice. Absolutely, Ramin. It, it, and, you know, I really want to highlight because the message that you're just delivering here is just so critical um, for everybody to think about. And it's also the cornerstone of what you've been hearing up till now in the users conference and you will continue to hear for the next couple of days. Uh, it's about simplicity. It's about, look, networking doesn't need to be complex. And even if it is complex, you know, your experience um, when you interact, when you use that technology should not be complex, it should be simple, it should be consistent, it should be intuitive. And you would remember, my viewers, you would remember those three words to mean effortless experience from, ex from extremes point of view. So that's where Ram, like these technologies that you're building, we are bringing these technologies to you, our viewers, in the shape of our campus fabric, in the shape of our data center fabric, and then all of these other technologies. Um, Ram, I 100% agree with you. It's, it's, it's about make it simple, make it agile because who knows what the business requirement is going to be tomorrow. Right. And that brings me to a topic that looms very large on everything that we do uh, these days, which is you know, the current pandemic that we are passing through, which is just changing the entire society around it. Every experience that we have is impacted by that and networking is no different. So COVID definitely is having an impact on, on, on networking as well. So from your vantage point, you talk to a lot of customers, you hear you know, the concerns that they have, the challenges that they have, you talk to a lot of vendors as well. Yeah. So from your vantage point, look in your crystal ball and tell us a little bit that, hey, post COVID, some of the things in networking that our viewers, our users, our customers and partners should be keeping at the back of their minds? Yeah, so, you know, the first thing I, I would say is uh, everybody should think about it. You know, it's the question that maybe somebody will ask them, you know, their boss or somebody else, hey, you know, should I continue to spend what I'm spending on, right? And, you know, that's the question even my boss asks me. I spend about 500 plus million dollars a year in R&D just for switching and routing. 
And the first question my boss asks me is, hey, what do you think? Uh, what does future look like? And do we need to invest at this level? And I say, hey, you know, talk to anybody around, whether it is AT&T, Verizon, Alibaba, in what has happened. Anybody that was in the non-digital space, their business is moving into a completely e-commerce enabled environment. Like you think about what happened when COVID hit us, right? Amazon took over. They could not keep up with their orders, right? Next thing that happens is logistical companies are not able to keep up with the orders that have come in. So the people who have already started to thrive are the ones who actually are on the right side of the equation, so to say. So for most of these enterprises, I think they will be faced with this question going forward, uh, which is, hey, you know, how do I actually be more, you know, uh, web enabled? And that's what it's, it's been a journey, but this journey is going to get accelerated. Like Satya Nardella from Microsoft said, they had four years of business got accelerated into two quarters, right? The transition or the transformation that has happened, adoption of the cloud and so on and so forth. But then the next question that looms in everybody's mind is, hey, are we all going to come back to the office, you know, right? And we are a very firm believer. Uh, as a company, we've already been operating with 50% of our employees coming back to work because we believe while it is important to stay home, stay safe as long as we can, in the long run, you cannot achieve the same level of innovation and the productivity unless there's human you know, engagement and human, human interaction. What that means is the campus today might not look like the campus of tomorrow. Maybe your campus can only handle 50% of the population versus what it was handling six months ago, right? But the kinds of technologies that have to be deployed in the campus are going to get accelerated. So for example, the whole notion of real-time tracking and location-based tracking becomes extremely important because you cannot do you know, tracking you know, based on just humans going and talking to others about who was in close contact with somebody else. So contact tracing is going to be completely automated. We have already done that at Broadcom. We use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and GPS. And every one of our phones, when we walk into campus, you know, it records that we are now in the campus and there's all contact tracing. And when we leave the campus, the phones, you know, that particular application gets shut off. But the IT is playing a far more critical role in actually enabling our post-COVID world of being able to bring the employees back and doing what we need to do best, right? So I think these are things that you know people have to think about, but I can say this with a conviction, which is networking is here to stay. The bandwidth is going to continue to grow more exponentially. The capabilities that people are going to expect out of networking is going to be far more. There's a lot of metadata that exists in the networking, whether it's metadata, for example, being able to do contact tracing or something else. And all of this is going to become essentially a business critical, mission critical requirement. Absolutely, Ron. And, and viewers, if you're, if you're wondering, what am I doing reaching out here? I'm turning my mic on and off. Because as, as Ron pointed out, our lives have changed working from home, working from office. I'm here in my basement and I have my two kids jumping up <laughs> upstairs. Uh, so just to make sure you don't, you don't get to hear all of that. Uh, but Ron, you're absolutely right. Um, as, as our customers, our partners, as they think through this, um, it's not like the campuses are gonna go away. Campuses are gonna morph. That's the point that you made. And that's such spot on. And the workforce, now all of a sudden, what I think about is that, or I describe it this way, that look, the campuses are there. Now your campuses have like 5,000 islands floating around, which is like people working from right. their home. So it's not like the mainland goes away. Um, and people have to think through that. I mean, like your point about, look, digital transformation was perhaps a choice before COVID. Now it's a necessity. It's not really a choice. Whether people want it or not, everybody is going to be driven towards that. Um, and this visibility aspect, you're spot on. Um, and it's very interesting that you kind of talked about tracing and the and the value of data and the importance of network in there, because like maybe what, like an hour, hour and a half ago, I was talking about that as well and sharing with our viewers, you know, some of the things that we are using or we are doing using some of your technology in our products to really be part of that solution. Um, so Ram, I, we could talk for the rest of the day on these topics, <laughs> but uh, there, there definitely is a time limit here. Um, I really want to thank you for coming and joining it uh, because you're such an important and integral partner of Extreme. And I think it's always good to share what we are talking about and what we are thinking with our customers and our partners. Uh, so I really want to thank you. And do you have any parting words 
uh, for the audience here at Extreme Connect. They are sitting at home, they're sitting in their offices. Some people I know are in their cars or on their vacations and stuff, and they're tuning in and they're listening. What's your parting words for all of these people? Yeah, hey, um, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to share, you know, uh, my thoughts and your thoughts with the uh, with the team here. Um, my, my my parting words are, you know, very simply: Look, when things look the darkest, you know things are going to get, you know, better on the other side. And I, I say this to my team. I say this to my family, uh, right? Which is, hey, look, we, we are at least in an industry which is on the right side of the digital divide. We just have to keep our heads down and keep doing what we do. And we are essential plumbers of the economy. So, you know, when you think about all the things that get delivered to you at home or whether it's video or, you know, Zoom classes or even your parcels coming home, none of that would have happened if not for this plumbing and networking that we do. So uh, we are grateful for having the opportunity to do what we do. And we are very thankful for partners like Extreme who kind of you know trusted us for the last 10 plus years and being able to uh, build the silicon that they can use to build their solutions. And we get very valuable feedback from them because they engage with you more directly than we engage you know, with you. And through you know, partners like Nabil, we understand what your challenges are. And we do our part to keep integrating those capabilities into our silicon and you know, keep advancing the state of art. So that's all I would say, stay safe and thank you. Thank you so much. And viewers, with that, we will, we will wrap up this section. You heard it from Ram. Look, networking is there to stay and we will together continue to work to enrich your experience every single day. You will have a lot of pieces like this on this channel and a lot of other material on other channels. So stay safe, stay with us. Um, listen to some interesting conversation like this, have some of the entertainment too. Rock on. Thank you so much. Thank you.